Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blaze to Be Shop. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to send out a huge thank you to everybody who has helped build and grow this channel this year. It was August when we hit a thousand subscribers and as we're wrapping up 2021, we're nearly 1,700 subscribers on the channel and getting more views, comments, and likes coming through every day. And that really is thanks to you. So I can't tell you how much I would appreciate it. Looking forward to a great 2022. Already have some video ideas out there. I've got a new surface grinder coming in next week. So I hope you'll join us next year for more videos on machining, welding, and everything else we continue to have going on here in the Blades to Be Shop. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, now would be a great time to do that. The most popular video in 2021 was on how to sharpen brazed carbide tooling. So with that, so much popularity around lathe tooling, I thought we'd wrap up the year with another video on lathe tooling. And today we're gonna do a little head-to-head -head comparison. When you have a chance to go to the bench and sharpen a tool, you pretty much have a choice between high-speed steel or braced carbide. So I thought we'd do a little head-to-head -head comparison on which of those two options actually cuts better. But before we get into that, it really isn't about going to the bench and sharpening tools. Probably 90, even 95% of the turning that I do on the lathe, if you watch my other videos, I'm going to be doing that with indexable carbide inserts. So I've got another video on my channel on lathe tooling headstock to tailstock, and I go through and I show you which of the indexable inserts I'm using to keep it cost effective. I try to keep it down to just a couple of different inserts, but the reality is even with just those couple, you truly can do 95% or so of your machining with that. They're very efficient, they last a long time, it saves you a lot of time at the bench sharpening. And if you want more information about indexable tooling, I would really recommend this book by David Best. It's called Introduction to Indexable Tooling for the Metal Lathe. Just a great resource, it's available on Amazon, I'll make sure I put the link in the description. So if you want more information on indexable tooling, which is probably what you're gonna use the majority of the time, would highly recommend you go check out this book. But for today, I realize that not everybody has indexable tooling in their shop yet, or in the case for me, you're looking for that specialty tool. Usually it's like a radius tool or maybe a grooving tool, something you don't have an insert for. That's when you're having to go to the bench and grind something. When you have to do that, what's gonna cut better for you? Braced carbide or high-speed steel? The fact that all of the indexable tooling is primarily carbide, I think that sort of lends the fact that, you know, maybe carbide is going to be a little bit better for you. But why is that? I went ahead and looked in the machinery handbook just to get a little bit of information around the difference between high-speed steel and brazed carbide tooling. And what it talks about in there is that brazed carbide or carbide tooling can handle more heat. It's a harder material, so it's more wear resistant, and you're able to turn it at higher speeds higher feeds, and those are the, the things that tend to lead to a better surface finish when you're machining. Going into it, I'm thinking that brazed carbide is gonna be our better choice. Uh, that's what I used in a shop 30 years ago before we had so much indexable tooling. We used primarily brazed carbide tooling. Uh, we had moved past high-speed steel at that point, but still I thought it'd be fun to do a comparison and just make sure that that is still what holds true today. So we're gonna compare high-speed steel and braced carbide in three different materials for this video. We're going to cut some 7075 aluminum, we're going to cut some 316 stainless, and we're going to cut some annealed 4140, and we're going to see which of these two tool types does better in cutting those. As I mentioned, I'm typically using a ground tool for something specialty, like a radius tool or a grooving tool. But for this head-to-head -head comparison, I didn't want to be cutting a bunch of grooves or a bunch of radiuses. It gets a little harder to compare surface finish. So we're just gonna do general outside diameter turning. Although in reality, I would probably use an insert for that if that's what I was doing in my shop on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully that makes sense, gives you an idea of what we're gonna cover in the video today. Before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit more about grinding and angles and everything else. I know I had some feedback on the brazed carbide video that I didn't go into as much detail on all the different angles there are for grinding a tool. And the reality is I'm not gonna get into that in a lot of detail today either. If you get into a machinery handbook, I mean, there are pages and pages and pages around relief angles, positive rake, negative rake, and how all those can impact your cutting. So that's more than I could cover in a video and more technical detail. 
But I will give you a couple of examples and sort of a rule of thumb as you're thinking about relief angle for cutting. So the rule of thumb that we're gonna follow is that the harder the material that you're gonna cut, the less relief angle that you're gonna to wanna to have, or the harder the tool itself, the less relief angle that you're gonna to wanna to have. So a couple of examples I did pull out of the machinery's handbook. If you're cutting a harder material, say a you know, 4340 or something like that, then if you're sharpening a piece of high-speed steel, you're looking for uh, 8 to 12 degrees of relief angle. That's going to be on the front and the side. If you're cutting that same material with a piece of braised carbide, then you're looking for 5 to 7 degrees of relief angle. And if you're cutting into a softer material, a piece of copper, a piece of aluminum, then you're looking for 12 to 16 degrees of relief angle with your high-speed steel, and you're looking for 8 to 14 degrees of relief angle with your braised carbide. Harder the material, less relief angle. The harder the tool, the less relief angle. And that's because, especially with your braised carbide, this is a harder and a more brittle material, so you want to have less relief angle to make sure you're keeping as much support as you can underneath that cutting edge to keep it from breaking. Same thing if you have a harder material, it's going to take more pressure to cut that, so you want to make sure you have more support and strength, so that's why you're going to change that relief angle. The reality is I just shared those numbers with you, but when I'm going to the grinder and I am sharpening a tool, I'm not pulling out a protractor or anything to measure those angles. So you're just trying to find that balance of you want to make sure you're leaving enough strength underneath that cutting edge and you want to make sure that you have enough relief that it's not going to rub on your material. You tend to get a better finish with more relief angle. So again, the softer materials, you can put more relief angle on there. It helps clear your chips. It makes sure that nothing is getting in there and rubbing on your surface finish. More relief angle is better, but that weakens your tool. You can start to introduce chatter. So you're finding that good balance uh, in grinding your tools to make sure that you've got sport, you have strength, you're not getting chatter, and it's cutting the way that you want to. So if you want more detail on all those different angles, pick up a machinery handbook and you can look through that. But for me, I find that I'm just going to the grinder and I'm grinding by eye and making sure that I have clearance and that serves pretty well for the different relief angles. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around. I'm going to show you the two tools that I ground up for today. Again, we're just turning on the outside, so these are not specialty tools. Could use an insert for these, but we're just going to go ahead and compare surface finish with high-speed steel or braced carbide so that if you're trying to fill in the gaps in your indexable tooling, hopefully this will give you an idea on what to invest in. The reality is buying a blank, whether you buy a chunk of high-speed steel or you buy a chunk of braised carbide, they cost almost the same on the front end. You can sharpen both of them multiple times and get a lot of use out of them. Really not a lot of difference in there. It just comes down to what's going to cut better for you. So let's check out and see if we can't figure out which one that's going to be. All right, before we jump on the lathe, let's just take a quick look at these tool bits. I tried to grind them up more or less the same. I did add just a little bit of side cutting angle on the high speed steel tool bit, give it a little bit more lead angle. But otherwise, I ground them up very similar, tried to put very similar nose radius on both of these. Uh, they are just ground by hand, freehand. I ground the uh, braced carbide on a silicon carbide wheel, finished that with a diamond wheel, and the high speed steel, I roughed that out on my belt grinder with a 60 grit. And I finished that with a 125 grit belt to get those both sharpened. Let's go take a look at how they cut. All right, so we're going to work our way from the softer material, the aluminum, up to the harder material, the 316 stainless. And we'll do high speed steel first, and then we'll do the braised carbide. I'm going to stick with the same feed throughout. So we're going to take a rough cut at 50 thou deep, and we're going to feed that at 7 thou per revolution. And then we'll take a finished cut at 10 thou, and we'll feed that at 4 thou per revolution. So we'll keep that same consistency throughout the whole process here. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to go about halfway down on this with my rough cut, and then I'll go halfway down with my rough cut with the braced carbide. I'll get in there with some nice pictures where I can get a little bit better clarity on what that finish looks like than with the video and I'll drop those pictures in there. We'll go back and do a finish cut and do something similar. So that's kind of the process. Let's go ahead and see what this is going to look like. Also from a speed perspective we do know that you can turn braced carbide much faster than you can turn the high speed steel tooling. So I'll share with you what speeds I looked up in the feeds and speeds chart. We're going to maximize, we're going to go as close to that as we possibly can. Uh, but when it comes to the aluminum, for the high speed steel at one inch diameter, I could turn that at 3,438 RPM. 
and for the carbide it's 68.75 and my lathe does not go that fast so we're going to max it out here at about 2200 rpm is the fastest that I can turn it. So theoretically since we're going to be closer to the proper speed for the high speed steel uh, maybe we will get a better finish with the high speed steel. We'll see how that turns out. And then when it comes to the stainless and the, the 4140, we're just about going to get in there. With the stainless, we'll definitely be able to hit the recommended speeds. With the 4140, I still won't quite be able to hit that with the carbide, but we'll be able to hit it with the high speed steel. We'll cover those when we get to those materials. Well, let's go ahead and jump in here. We're going to max out the speed on the lathe, and we're going to take our first rough cut with this high speed steel. Then we'll rough it with the raised carbide, we'll compare them side by side. There's our high speed steel rough cut there on that aluminum. Came out pretty nice. get the camera out and we'll zoom in there looking at it can feel pretty good finish with both but it does tend to look just a little shinier on that high speed steel let's get a good picture so even with the close-up it does look a little shinier with that high speed steel cut I will tell you later we're gonna touch this with some emery and you get a little bit different look at it on the braised carbide side it looks like it cut fine it's funny you get this little bit of white mixed in with it there but bottom line is pretty decent finish with both but this one, I would have to say on our initial rough cut, we're going to have to give this one to the high speed steel. All right, let's move on to our finish cuts. So I'm going to slow the feed down and we're only going to take 10 thou cut. Looking a little more similar there now. Let's get another picture of that. We'll see what that looks like. So with that super bright light on it, the magnified picture, yeah, it's a tough call, but very, very similar finish. So bottom line is with something like aluminum, you can get a pretty good finish either way. They're both with a roughing cut and a finish cut, they seem to work pretty darn good, no matter which one we used. Let's move on to our next material and see how this progresses. So next up is the 4140 and it's only half inch diameter, so we'll put in a smaller collar here. Now our speed on this 4140 is going to be 917 RPM for the high speed steel and 3000 RPM for the carbide or maxed out again for the carbide. So we didn't have to change the speeds last time, 
We will be changing the speed, so we're going to slow it down to 917 for this high speed steel. And we'll set it back to our roughing feed. Alright, so there was 50 thou with a high speed steel. Now for those of you that work with the Neil 4140, you know that this stuff is pretty tough to get a nice finish on. And that high speed steel, it actually did not too bad. Now let's speed this back up again. Okay, so there was our two cuts on 4140. Let me get a nice picture of those. So it's a little smeary on both, but I personally like the finish better with the carbide there. I'll let you decide for yourself which one you think is better. Now let's get in there and take our finish cut. So this is gonna be 10 thou, lighter feed, and let me slow this back down for the high speed steel, back to 917. Get our carbide back in there. Speed back up. Okay, let's get in there and get a picture of that. All right, I think we're starting to see some differentiation here. Definitely looking like a nicer finish with the carbide there than we got with the high-speed steel on that finish cut on 4140. All right, let's move to our stainless and see how we come out with that. Get back to my roughing feed. Now for a speed, we are all the way down to 286 RPM for the high speed steel on this. And we're gonna be up to 1623 with the carbide on this. So let's slow this way down to 286.
All right, well, there was our 50 thou roughing cut. Let's get in there with our carbide. And now we're all the way up to Tell you which one feels nicer. We were cutting nicely with the carbide, lots of ripping, tearing with the high speed steel. Let's get in there and get a picture of that. Well, in addition to feeling rough on that high speed steel cut, I think you can see from the picture here that this one clearly goes to the brazed carbide for the better finish. All right, let's get in there for our finish cuts. Let's speed that back up. actually got a not bad looking finish with the high speed steel, but we still got a better looking finish there with that brazed carbide. Let's get in there and get a close up of that. I think the brazed carbide is a pretty clear winner again on the finish cut on this 316 stainless. So just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and hit that with some emery and let's see which one cleans up a little faster with some emery cloth on there as well if we were really trying to polish up a finish on there. So that was some 400 grit emery, tried to hit both of them about the same, and let me get a good picture of that for you. Yeah, I think that's where it's pretty telling is when you zoom in, after you emery it, you can really see that you're getting a better finish with that carbide on there. Looks pretty good here, they're both nice and shiny after a little rub, but uh, that picture I think says it all as you zoom in and take a look at it there. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our piece of aluminum, it's the same size collet. Let's see what it looks like with a little rub. Well, similar to what we saw before, not as noticeable an impact when you put the 400 emery on the aluminum, Still kind of a toss up between the brazed carbide side and the high speed steel side. I think I still prefer the finish on the brazed carbide, but again, pretty much a toss up here on this one, I think. I think that answers it for me. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Well, YouTube, that is a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be Shop. 
Hopefully you enjoyed that as we compared braced carbide to high speed steel. And next time you're looking for a specialty tool that you don't have an insert for in your shop, hopefully that gave you some ideas on what you're gonna grab. For me, I think that's gonna continue to be braced carbide to fill in those gaps instead of the high speed steel. I'm very comfortable grinding it and sharpening it and it just seems to cut better for me and be a little bit more repeatable. Wears a little bit longer, it lasts a little bit longer, which isn't really a surprise since as we mentioned up front, uh, the world has gone to indexable carbide inserts and I think that sort of proves enough right there that carbide is a little bit better material. So in my opinion, that's where I'm gonna go and I'm gonna stick with braised carbide. Appreciate y'all tuning in for another video. I hope your year is wrapping up well. For those of you subscribed to the channel, again, I sure appreciate it. Appreciate you helping build and grow this channel this year. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, great time to hit that subscribe button right now. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video. And until I get that one out, y'all take care.